on my immediate left is Maxwell Salter. Um, Max was first elected to the Beverly Hills City Council in 1986 and brought to this position his years of practical experience as a businessman, philanthropist, and community leader. Mr. Salter served as mayor of the city of Beverly Hills from April of 1989 through April of 1990, re-elected as vice mayor in 82, and a second term as mayor from 1993 through 1994. Professionally, he is chairman of Beano's, a Los Angeles-based retail clothing company. And Max is probably the first one that um, I became personally involved with when I first came to Beverly Hills back in 1990. Um, watching some of the different city council meetings, I found out that uh, people sometimes you know, wore ties to express their personality. And uh, at this time, I'll turn this over to the uh, Honorable Maxwell Hillary Salter. Thank, thank you. I, I, I want to take one minute and talk a little bit about Ben Norton. I don't want it to be part of my time. Uh, and the reason I want to do this is so many times an individual will do something that takes tremendous courage and step up to the plate. Now, uh, how I found out about this, uh, Ed Crines was telling me that uh, Ben Norton overstepped his bounds because uh, they had deposited some money and they were getting a high rate of interest and so forth and so on. And as he was telling me about this, I said, man, there's a man with courage. You know what he did? He got on a plane, went to Florida, got every dime out of this savings and loan back to Beverly Hills, and very shortly afterwards, that SNL went down. And I say the people of this city should know about Ben Norton. Uh, especially with someone as strong as Ed Crimes was not easy. Add that on to my time, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, some of the things we talked about at the time and what you were most proud of and what you felt were major accomplishments. Uh, Bob Tannenbaum and I and uh, about 70 of our people from the city went back to Emmitsburg to study emergencies, how to survive them, how to work with them. It could be a flood, it could be an earthquake, it could be a Holocaust type of fire. And we spent a lot of time, we spent a full week there, 24 hours a day. When we came back, we set in motion a, a uh, an idea that we must have a city plan and this book was in fact incorporated into the city it was that thick and when did it come into play when we had the riots and I want to tell you we had in our city one broken plate glass period immediately across the street from us big five totally looted. Pico and La Cienega, two blocks from our border, burned out totally. And I want to tell you, this, in my judgment, is what city council people are supposed to do. They are supposed to anticipate the future, just as these gentlemen behind us who bought parking lots in anticipation of the time when we would need parking. And I tried to do this wherever I could. So, but that was one of, now, the next question is, I'm gonna ask our city manager, when was the last time we had a test, Mr. City Manager? Of what? Of the emergency <laughs> program. We're supposed to have tests every so often. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Something about our people and the city. We were floating a bond issue of some $60 million at that time. I never received a phone call. I never received a postcard. I never heard anyone ask me about it. However, when George Herm's work of art went on Palm 
Palm Drive and Santa Monica, the sky was falling. The world came to an end. We had calls. What is this garbage on my street? And on and on and on. And, I, and, and then I remember one time uh, sitting as mayor, and they kept coming up one after the other after the other. And I said, you don't seem to understand. Art is supposed to create passion in the viewer. And you certainly are passionate. Anyhow, they kept going and kept going. I said, look, one and a half years it'll be gone. And it was gone. But the big things, the important things, it just seems like the average citizen doesn't get there. Few of the things that we did, and again, I will reiterate that nobody does it alone. You must have the three votes. However, if you can persuade your fellow councilmen, at least two of them, to get the job done, you can do it. Uh, one of the things that uh, I am proud of that we accomplished was the Rodeo Brighton Garage. Initially, the entry to that garage was on Rodeo Drive, some of the most expensive land in the city. I had a call one evening from Max Factor III, and I absolutely want to give him credit for this. And he said, I got an idea about that garage that we ought to be doing, and uh, I said, fine, when do you want to meet me? I'll meet you at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. By golly, he was there. And he pointed out one of the simplest things was to take the entry of the garage off of Rodeo, put it around on Brighton, which is a one-way street, and our Camden garage to that point never was filled. It was always half empty. Uh, I said, you know something? The idea is brilliant. If we can do it engineering-wise, we're going to do it. Anyhow, now we find out we can do it, but it takes an investment of $4 million. And it's like shooting fish in a rain barrel, knowing what the rentals were on Rodeo Drive. We spent $4 million on that project. The city gets $2 million a year out of that. I have never had an investment personally in my entire life that good. Another thing we did with uh, Ben Stansbury, we were in the process, and it was a real danger and uh, an attractive nuisance, our uh, waterworks on La Cienega. And we were ready to put the, uh, the big ball to it because kids were climbing up there, and we were scared to death that one of the kids was going to fall off, get killed. I mean, it just, I personally was terrified about it, and I was one of the people who was really for tearing it down. Now, Ben Stansbury comes along, and God love him. Ben was my real good friend, and we did do a lot together. Uh, the only place that Ben and I had a difference, he wanted Beverly Hills to have its own Secretary of State, and I didn't agree with that. Uh, anyhow, we went to the Academy, and Bob Wise, who was then president, and we negotiated out a deal to for one thing, we wanted to keep the picture business in our community, and the other thing is to create a museum of such wonderful quality. And they spent six or seven million dollars just rehabilitating the building. Now, every time you go down La Cienega, you see a beautiful building. Disappointments, they're always disappointments, and, and I have to tell you, one of the big ones was Greystone. And I know how hard so many people worked on it. We had the perfect person for Greystone. He had the perfect collection for it. He had the money to rehabilitate it. We did all of the good things, all of the right things. We had the contract uh, with Fred Wiseman, uh, who has since passed away. And our very good friends, Mr. Bob Tannenbaum and uh, the lady, what was her name? Uh, Charlotte Spadaro. Made and created such a fuss, even after we had the contract. They just were raucous about it, and finally Fred said, look, who needs this? Anyhow, he built a wonderful museum in Minneapolis. He gave a ton of his stuff to uh, 
to San Diego and also to UCLA. The second disappointment, am I talking too long? I got a minute of his time. Uh, <laughs> when I was in office, we spent a lot of time on water wells and the possibility of creating gray water, of developing the new reservoir, and, uh, and even bought the three lots in uh, the three railroad lots in the industrial area. So we developed so many more acres of land. And this was 10 years ago, and I am sorry to state that as far as I can see, nothing has been done. And it, to me, it's an embarrassment because I really felt that we put all the works in. We had the land area, we had, the, had certainly had the money, we had everything. Anyhow, disappointments. All right, I think I've talked enough. Uh, oh, wait a minute, one more. I, that, 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 that I really, I, and I might tell you that because we bought those lots, Alan was able to put together a deal with the DreamWorks to keep them here in Beverly Hills. Wonderful lease. I never found out the numbers because Again, once you're out, you're out. <laughs> uh, uh, the Rodeo uh, to Rodeo. Now I'm going to tell you about this one because this is one of the important ones. Uh, the fellow who was putting the deal together called us in and Ben Stansbury and I uh, went to see him. He said, look, the configuration of the lot doesn't allow us to build a garage uh, size that we need. We need to intrude on Rodeo Drive. So uh, I said, uh, I think it's doable. I think we can do it. So uh, I said, but we naturally want something. Well, what do you want? I said, I think what would be perfect for two Rodeo is two hours free parking forever in perpetuity. Guy looks at me and he almost dropped dead. He said, how can I go to my lenders with a deal like this? This is an important part of our income. I said, look, why don't you think about it for a day or two, get back to me. By golly, he called me back. He said, if you can get the rest of the council to go for this, you've got a deal. And our council people did it and we made a deal and we have now 30 seconds. I got 30 seconds more, terrific. Anyhow, you can all park two hours, uh, two hours free in a Rodeo lot because of the deal Ben Stansbury and I made. Uh, I have a book here at the Beverly Hills Follies and uh, you're all welcome to look at it. It is great. It was uh, enjoyable times. Thank you all very much for being so patient.